Hi friends, here is a summary of changes for GATE CSE 2021. So we thought we will cover all of the key changes that are coming in GATE CSE 2021 and what would their impact be on your preparation on or your strategy of preparation, right? So let's go step by step and understand this. So we'll also share this document with you in the description section of this video so that you can read this document at your leisure even after this video is over, okay? Cool. So let's let's go into the first first set of changes. So again, all these changes have been studied from the GATE 2021 brochure for which we have placed a link here. If you go here, this brochure has been put out by IIT Bombay. Our team has thoroughly studied it and we have listed down all the key changes. So if you want to read the whole 2021 GATE brochure, here is the link to it. Please feel free to read it. So the first major change is with respect to eligibility. So so earlier, only students who are either in their BTEC final year or who have already completed their BTEC were eligible to take the examination. From this year onwards, you could be in BTEC third year, fourth year or later or you might have already completed the BTEC, uh, BTEC program itself, right? So candidates who are either in their third year, final year or candidates who have completed their BTEC all of them are eligible for GATE 2021. That's one set of candidates. The second set of candidates are people who are pursuing MSc, MA, MCA or equivalent, who are currently in their first year of their master's program like MSc, MCA or MA or any equivalent program or students who are in their second year or students who have completed their second year of MSc, MA, MCA or equivalent, right? So what this what this literally does is it 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 allows more people to take the GATE 2021 exam. Again, this is a screenshot. Again, we have placed screenshots from this brochure 20 of GATE of GATE 2021 itself. So that if if you choose to read the brochure, you can find these sections as is. These are all images that we have taken from the GATE 2021 brochure as is, just so that it's fully clear and thorough. So again. So what this what this eligibility criteria change does is it allows more students to take the examination. So let's take the BTEC or BE or B pharmacy students, right? Imagine so third year students, fourth year students, students who have completed, all of them can take the test. But note that there will not be much change with respect to competition if you think about it from the admissions perspective. Because a student who is in the third year, let's assume he gets a very good rank, right? But he or she will not be able to join when it comes to admissions. They are not your competition. Imagine you're a fourth year student or you've completed your bachelor's degree and you're taking the gate exam this time, right? A student who is in third year has to go on and complete fourth year of their undergraduate studies or fourth year of their BTEC next year. So when it comes to actual admissions at IITs, IISC, or NITs or any of the major institutes which accept GET, the third year students, while they are a competition during the examination, but they are not a competition with respect to admissions because only students who have completed their final year or students who will come, who have already completed their or currently in their fourth year or who have completed their BTEC, only they can end up getting an admission at IITs, IASC or NIT, right? So it's a very, very important, but a subtle change. Yes, in terms of the exam ranks themselves, the competition will increase. But with respect to admissions, there will be no change in competition because somebody who is currently in their third year will have to again finish fourth year while you are while you have joined your MTech first year program at IITs or IAS or NITs, right? It's a very important and subtle change. Now, if you are a third year student, it is also a blessing for you because now you can take the exam in third year, get a very good rank, and use it after your fourth year also, right? So this is a win-win for students who are in their third year, who are in their fourth year, or students who have completed their BTEC, right? It's a win-win for everyone. So that's a very important but a subtle change that you should remember. We have gotten we have gotten some calls and emails from students saying, hey, won't the competition be much more severe? Yes, for the examination itself, the competition will be severe. But as far as the admissions are concerned, for this year, because a third year student can't get admitted right after they finish their third year. From an admission standpoint at IITs, IASCs, after GATE 2021, 
there will not be much of a change with respect to competition itself. It's a very important but a subtle difference. Cool? Okay. So the next thing that we will look at is the question papers, right? And the pattern of questions. So there are some patterns which we have seen earlier, which we all are used to. You have multiple choice questions with negative marking. This is same as the previous years, right? You also have the numerical answer type without negative marking. This is also something that we know of. The third type of questions that are introduced in GATE 2021 are the multiple select questions, MSQs. They carry either one or two marks, right? But there is no negative marking here. In this case, one or more than one choices can be correct. So in this case, it will be like a multiple choice question. You will have a question. You will have four options, A, B, C, D. But more than one option can be correct here. Right? So it's a very, very important but a subtle change. And in this case, for multiple select questions, there is no negative marking. And again, there is. it's very important. There is. There are no partial credit for choosing partially correct combinations of answers. So only if you get all the... Suppose imagine that this is, this is correct and this is correct. Only if you say A is correct and D is correct, you will be awarded marks. Or else for partial marks, you will not be awarded. For partially correct answers, you will not be awarded any marks. Similarly, there is no negative marking, right? So we will be introducing multiple select questions into our into our tests because this, this is a completely new type of question that has not been there earlier and we already have our test series ready. So we'll be introducing some questions in the same pattern as MSQs also, right? We already have multiple choice questions and NATs already in our test series. We'll be adding this as part of our GATE applied course test series. Cool? Okay. So the next thing, Again, uh, one more very important question that some students asked us is, how many MSQs would be there? How many multiple select questions would be there? It is unknown. It is not clearly stated anywhere. But we have done some quick research and we found out that there is an exam called JAM, which stands for Joint Admission Test for Masters and Research Programs. Again, this test is also conducted by IITs and IASC every year. This is mostly for MSc research programs and MSc plus PhD programs and for PhD programs. So the JAM entrance exam, which is very also similar to GATE, has about 60 questions and 10 questions out of these 60 questions are MSQs. So MSQs have already been added to the JAM examination. So since GATE is also conducted by the same set of institutions for very similar purpose, we are assuming that we can expect approximately, that's why we've given this approximation symbol here. Again, gate has 65 questions. So we are assuming that you can expect about 10 to 12 MSQs in a typical gate question paper. Very, very importantly, we believe because we have studied the MSQs which are there in the JAM examination papers, we have seen that MSQs are typically easy questions, but they're also slightly tricky and they're extremely prone to silly mistakes because you have to get all the correct options correct, right? So MSQs typically are easy questions as compared to other types of questions, whether it's multiple choice questions or whether it is numerical based questions. They're typically easier, but they're highly prone to silly mistakes. So you have to be careful to avoid silly mistakes because these questions are easy to start with. Again, this is our observation and analysis from the JAM question papers of the last few years. Okay, cool. So now, as far as, again, design of questions, nothing much has changed. There are broadly these four types of questions. Recall, where you have to recall a concept. Comprehension, where you have to understand the basics, where your basic understanding of the concepts is used to, to, to create a question. Third, you have to apply concepts that you have learned to solve some problems and analysis and synthesis. This is mostly about diagrams and things like that. So not much of a change in the design of questions. The only change is adding this new type of question called as multiple select questions, right? So that, that that's the key thing here. The next thing is syllabus changes. So let's go subject by subject where there are changes. We will also point you to how these changes have been already incorporated as part of our GATE applied course and which all changes are yet to be incorporated. So let's go topic by topic. First, in the whole of discrete mathematics, there is a new topic that is added called monoids, which was not there in the previous years. But we have already covered monoids. 
again, we've already, again, this is the current coverage of these concepts, new concepts that are added to the syllabus this year. So we've already covered it in this specific video, in video 1.19, in the group theory introduction. Again, so monoids, the clear definition of monoids, some examples, everything is given exactly at this timestamp in this video, right? So we wanted to give clarity to all of our course registered students also on where some of the new topics are covered, right? So monoids is one new topic that got added. And exactly in this video, at this timestamp, we've explained what monoid is. And we've also added some examples. For all the new topics, we'll also add some problems for practice and test series also. That will take a little while, but some of the concepts we are trying to cover first. Okay, the next, the next change is in compiler design. Okay, so look at this. So in compiler design, the, these are all the topics that got, so th this is the whole, th th this is the whole code optimization part, which is there in compiler design, right? So some of the concepts, we've already covered the basics of code optimization. For example, if you look at this section of our course videos, right? So we have taken a screenshot of our course videos. We talk about runtime environments. We talk about basics of code optimization already in our course videos. But there are some more topics that are mentioned in the syllabus, which are not yet covered. For example, data flow analysis, constant propagation, liveness analysis, common sub expression elimination. These are the topics for which we will quickly add the content to our course videos as soon as possible. Okay, these are these are additional concepts which are added this year. Again, of all the concepts that got added this year, some of them have already been covered in our course videos. We just covered some basics of code optimization because we wanted to explain those concepts in brief. But there are new concepts that got added which we have not yet covered, which which we will add to the compiler design course as soon as possible. Cool. So that's one. The next thing is operating systems. So in operating systems, system calls got added. But system calls as a topic itself has been partly covered in our course videos because we try to give you an applied view of the subject. So we covered systems calls in the context of, I, again, I'll tell you, we, we covered basics of fork. We covered some of these concepts in our course videos, but we will be adding more videos on system calls because it's clearly stated as a topic this year. So it's already covered partly in these videos. Currently, in the current course that we have, in process scheduling, when we give an overview of process scheduling, we talk about the fork, which is a very, very popular uh, system call. And this is the timestamp at which it is discussed. Similarly, in process synchronization at seven at seven minutes in this video, again, we, we'll, I'll share this document so that you can go to this video and check out exactly this timestamp. We have discussed a few system calls like SHM get and SHMAT and things like that. So these are some of the topics which we, that's why I said system calls is partly covered. It's not completely covered, but we'll do more videos on system calls. Again, if you want to read textbooks, these are some references. Wikipedia has a very nice Wikipedia page for system calls. Again, in Galvin, which is a very popular textbook for, uh, for, uh, for, for operating systems, it is covered on page 63 in section 3.3, right? We have also provided a link of, for, for the same right? In case you want to read it right away, but we'll be adding more videos as soon as possible. Next is IO scheduling. That's a new topic, which is there, but this topic is already covered in our course videos extensively. That's why we are giving. So for example, in file systems and disk management. So we already cover this video, video 1.6 covers IO scheduling in lots of detail, right? So next coming to computer networks. This is the syllabus from 2020. This is a syllabus from 2021. So here are the major changes. First and foremost, in the new syllabus, the, the they have completely removed the security part, right? The network security part has been completely removed. So what we are planning to do is in our course videos, we will move all the network security videos into an optional section, clearly stating that this is not required for gate 2021. Similarly, some small topics like IPv6 and basics of Wi-Fi, are also removed. So we will make all the topics that got removed as optional. We'll clearly state that so that you can skip it if you choose to. Next, uh, this is a tricky part. So LAN technologies, right, especially Ethernet is not precisely mentioned in the new syllabus. It's not clearly stated that LAN technologies is there. Earlier it was clearly stated. But, but 
we suggest students to do this part because Ethernet bridging is mentioned in the syllabus. Ethernet itself is not clearly mentioned in the syllabus, but Ethernet bridging is mentioned. So we have covered in our course, look at this, we have already covered in our course all the concepts of Ethernet bridging in these two videos. So what we recommend to be conservative and safe is not to skip Ethernet as a concept. Even though it's not explicitly mentioned, it is better to read the concepts of Ethernet. So we will not be making them optional. Let them be there in the syllabus so that even if there is a question which is about Ethernet because Ethernet bridging is clearly mentioned in the syllabus, you are, you, you are well equipped to answer those questions. Right? That's very, very important. Again, just to be clear here, we have all kinds of switching mentioned in this specific video. Rest of all the syllabus about computer networks is covered very thoroughly in our course. Right? So only these parts, network security, IPv6 and basics of Wi-Fi will be moved into, will be, will be clearly tagged as optional. Rest everything will stay the same. Let's not skip Ethernet as part of LAN technologies because Ethernet bridging is there clearly stated in the syllabus and we don't want to miss out and make a mistake of skipping a topic. Right? Cool. So the next thing is general aptitude. Right? So if you see this is the, so in general aptitude, which again has both verbal ability and numerical ability, this is the syllabus for 2020. The syllabus for 2021 has verbal ability, quantitative aptitude, analytical aptitude and spatial aptitude, right? So the syllabus has been slightly increased in general aptitude for all, the, again, this is common for all branches, including computer science, right? So there are some topics which are not yet covered in our course videos. Again, some of these topics about quantitative aptitude, some of them are already covered in the course videos. There are some topics which are not yet covered. For example, data interpretation, two and three dimensional plots, maps and tables, elementary statistics, exponents and logarithms, some spatial aptitude, the whole section of spatial aptitude and logic, deduction and induction. Again, some of these topics you may have learned in, in discrete mathematics. For example, logic itself is something that you learn in discrete mathematics, right? Again, exponents and logarithms are stuff that you, that you cover briefly in engineering math, right? Again, some probability is already covered as part of probability in, in, in engineering mathematics. But we thought it's better to create new content for these topics so that you're well prepared even to get full marks in the aptitude or in the general aptitude section. So there are some changes in the general aptitude and we'll be quickly making videos and some solved problems for these topics and add them to our course videos. Okay, so next coming to exam dates. Not much of a change here, but just make sure these are the dates of the examination and uh, just make sure that you have everything in place and you are following, I mean, just make sure that the dates are well understood by you. So you can think of the first week of, first to second week of uh, February as the dates of examination. So try and pack up your whole preparation by Feb 1st. Okay, that, that's, that's the key takeaway. Now, as far as marks distribution is concerned, again, nothing much has changed here. The distribution of marks for all papers except these, which means including computer science, 15 marks for general aptitude, which also includes verbal, 13 marks for engineering mathematics and 72 marks for the rest of the subjects, right? So that, that's the key takeaway. Again, this is, this is same as earlier, not much of a change here. So again, I'll share this whole document with you so that you can refer to this document and see the links, use the links, read the detailed brochure if you wish to. Again, we have already read it multiple times, multiple people, all of our mentors have read it and they've compiled the, these list of key changes. So as long as you go through these key changes, I think you have covered most of the important differences between GATE 2020 and 2021.